but people probably don't go that in depth. That makes me kind of sound nuts now that I say that. And with the dry erase, I can easily decide that I don't want to plant that there, move it around, and then once I have something that I really like, I can then draw a final plant. I plan my garden around what grows well in my area, how much space I have, and how much of each thing my family's going to eat. So last year was the first year that I had our 50 by 50 garden, which is about, well, there's an extra row in the back, so it's a little more than that. Um, it's 12 50 foot rows that are about two and a half to three feet wide. And then running the opposite direction in the very back, there's another 50 foot row. So last year when I planned our garden, I really kind of went off the top of my head and just guessed. And it worked out pretty good for me, but I couldn't keep up with preserving the things that I needed to preserve and that was definitely an issue. I'm hoping that this year we can get a better handle on things. Um, if you have the expectation that your first year of trying something is going to go perfect, then you're probably going to be disappointed. So the first thing I did do this year to plan out our garden was to use the garden planner by Melissa K. Norris to determine how much of each plant I want to grow in order to meet the needs that we actually consume in a year. So I will link the chart that I used last year to determine yields and how much that I should plant based on how much we eat down below. Um, but this year I did use the charts available in this, which I think are available online. And if I can find these, I will also link these below because that's Thing that people do. From there, because I am a very visual person, I charted how much of each thing we need on a list. And then I also put in here, um, the, the color coding is the light requirements for each thing. So things that are cool with shade are in blue. Things that can take part sun or part shade are in orange and things that require full sun are in yellow. Um, so that just makes it easier for me when I'm then plotting it on my actual visual um, garden design. I can see. <laughs> and then at the end here I have how much, how many feet based on how, because we have two and a half foot wide garden beds, that means that I can fit a certain amount of um, plants in each row. I'm not just going with one row of a lot of plants, especially things like carrots. You're going to put more than one row within the bed. So I am using the spacing from the Market Gardener for that um, to determine exactly how many feet then of each bed I need to use. And that is what I have written here in this book is how many feet so I know like I need for example a, a full um 50 feet which is one whole row of tomatoes and 25 feet of peppers which is half a row of peppers that makes it a lot easier for me to then plot that on my map the other thing I've marked is whether or not things need trellising or staking because that's also important when you're plant putting them on the map because you want to know one, how tall things are going to be because they're going to cast a shadow at a certain time of day depending on how you run your rows. So then once I know how much of each row I'm going to use, I am plotting it on this. So I just made this this year. It's just a piece of paper that I've laminated. So on the paper, these lines that, sh that actually map out the rows are written on the paper. And then I've laminated that. And then all of the things that I've written here are actually in dry erase marker so that I can erase it as I'm trying to plan things out because writing it on the paper and erasing pencil can get messy. So if you don't have this option, another thing that I also have done before is make a piece of paper with the lines on it and then cut out little pieces of paper in the shape to tell me how much and move those around and then wrote on another paper how much I planted. I, a lot of people probably don't go that in depth. That makes me kind of sound nuts now that I say that. <laughs> but 
I'm just a very visual person and also a very indecisive person. So I kind of need to move things around. And with the dry erase, I can easily decide that I don't want to plant that there, move it around. And then once I have something that I really like, I can then draw a final garden plan. And my plan this year is also to then laminate that because when I get out into the garden, usually my piece of paper gets disgusting and I can't even read it and it gets ripped. And it would be nice if you could keep it um, nice even when you're out in the dirt and the wet. Then when I actually have the garden plan, um, which way does this go? Like this. Okay. So then when I actually have this, I know that the, the sun rises over here and sets over here. So that means if I have anything that's on a trellis, it's going to, um, the things that are on this side of it are going to get light in the morning, but they're going to get a shadow at night when the sun's on the other side. So that's something you have to think of. If it has a higher light requirement, you're going to want it to get morning light. And if it needs less light, like if it's spinach or something like that, you're going to want it, to, you could put it on the other side. And make use of that space. So that's another thing that I consider when I'm planning in this way and that's another reason why it's so great to be able to move things around because then you think oh yeah if I'm putting tomatoes there and they're gonna grow up to four feet on a trellis I probably don't want to put my peppers on the opposite side so that they're going to miss that morning sun and be in a shadow part of the year. It's not going to be an issue when your plants are little and you're going to think everything is getting full sun, but once it gets, they get big, you really need to be planning your garden with the expectation of the full grown plant and, and not even thinking about the little plant. I mean, I guess you do need to think about the little plant because sometimes they have different requirements <laughs> as far as light. You don't want to burn your babies, but... So I also know that the things in the back are going to be less sunny than the things in the front part of the rows. So I do, the, the other row that I talked about before goes across the top here. I know what I'm planting there. I'm going to plant some herbs and some walking stick kale and that's pretty much that. I don't need to plan that out in this way. This is the main bulk of my garden that I feel the need to really plan and that's kind of how I, how I do it. Now that I have this in place, I'm then going to put to plot that out on a nice piece of paper and make it all pretty and then laminate that so I can take it outside with me and not destroy it, as I said. So another thing that I do do when I'm planning, <laughs> um, another thing that I do when I'm planning my garden is I plot, um, gosh, I gotta start over. A few moments later. So the other thing that I do when I'm planting my garden is I do use companion planting in the sense, like I said, I don't plant something next to something that's going to overshadow it. Um, but as far as planting something next to each other in the, in the row next to it, as far as main crops, I'm not really that concerned about that. But I do intermingle herbs and um, flowers and things that, that get rid of specific pest issues that I have with those crops. So with potatoes, I have potato bug issues with squash. I have squash bug issues, um, tomatoes, aphids. So there are specific plants that you can plant to target those specific pests, but you do have to plant them in large quantities and intermingle them. And I have had a lot of success with that last year. My neighbor had potato bugs in multiple potato beds and I did not have a single one in mine. And I do think it was because of my companion planting efforts. So I am going to make an entire other video about how I use companion planting, but I just wanted to let you know that I do do that as well but I don't plan that on my garden plan so much. I then kind of write that on the main plan and kind of make a list on the back too of spacing. So I will get to that in that other video. And until then, 